I would like to welcome you to our online presentation today with Latin Trails. We're here to discuss Galapagos and Machu Picchu, the perfect combination. And here to start our presentation and introduce you to our topic today is Maria with Latin Trails. Welcome, Maria. Hello, Liz. Greetings from Ecuador. My name is Maria Salem, and I'm marketing coordinator here at Latin Trails. First, I would like to thank you for joining us to this webinar. I would like to give you a little hint about Latin Trails. Latin Trails offers authentic travel experience in Ecuador and Peru. We customize in trips and groups for families, individuals, travelers, taking into account their unique interests. What we do different is that we really care about you. Here is a location map. Here you can see where is Ecuador and Peru located. We are in the western side, south of, uh, side of South America, bordering the Pacific Ocean at the equator line between Colombia and Chile. The, dis the distance of this country has made us uh, come up with this wonderful combination that is Galapagos and Machu Picchu. Let me show you in the bigger map how this can be done. Here you can see a little bit of the distances between Galapagos, that is right in front of Ecuador, and Machu Picchu, that is in the southern part of Peru. Here we have a map of Galapagos. These maps of locations is very important and relevant in order for people to realize the distances that they will have to fly and how to prepare the itinerary. Why I would like to discuss uh, and give a little bit overview of what you need to know to do this trip. Galapagos and Machu Picchu is a hard to equal combination because in one side you have a natural reserve. Meantime, in the other aspect, let me go through this. Oh, I passed real fast, sorry. In one side, we have the archaeological Machu Picchu, and the other side is the natural reserve. First, we have to figure out how long you want to travel. Determ mean a uh, budget during the time you want to travel. And one of the most important things, you need to choose the vessel. We have a fleet of four vessels at the Galapagos, and we will explain the main difference of each one. Also another important matter is that you mean uh, how active you plan to be in Machu Picchu. I would like to take the opportunity to introduce here to Javier Echeverria, that is a Galapagos expert, to tell you before we go more in detail about the vessels, about the wonders of Galapagos and why you should come and discover this natural paradise. No, aquí está así el clima. El clima es otro. Hello everyone, my name is Javier Echeverria. Nice to meet you. Um, okay, I'm going to talk just a little bit, uh, a small presentation about the weather conditions about uh, Galapagos. That is uh, the last time we were in this presentation, and all the people there, we had a lot of questions about the weather the conditions and everything that we have in Galapagos. So I would like just to give you a small presentation about that, just to give you an idea, because most of the people, when you have a lot of clients asking where or when is the best time to go to, to Galapagos, it's difficult to say because it depends of, of, the, of the animals, it depends of the season, it depends of the, uh, of the lives of the people. So what, what we recommend is just to give you an idea of the seasons, and it depends on that. You can you can find more animals in specific periods. Sometimes you can have more more 
uh, green life in the in the islands, and you can find also more animals in the world. It depends of this of the time. So from January, actually from December until March, is the um, is the winter season. Like that's how we call it in Galapagos when we have a lot of rain on Galapagos. So it's more green life over there. That means that's the best period of time if you if we want to have green life on the islands. So that's uh, the, the period of time with most of the animals there on the land parts just to grab some food, just to take the uh, the green life of the animals. So that's what what we have on the island. That's the best period. So that means we have a lot of rain on Galapagos. So, but it's not like like the winter like in no in other places, uh, but we have, we have, for example, to give you an idea, uh, we have we have rain like for half hour, and after that it, it stops, and after we have the sun, but it can be that in two hours later we we will also probably have more rain, and that's the rainy season in Galapagos. So it's difficult to say that we don't have rain all the time. So it, it can happen that we have rain. Two hours later we have sun. Two hours later we have rain again, and two hours later again the sun. So that's the the change or the modifications that we have in the weather in the rainy season in Galapagos. Uh, from April, May, until October, November, it's difficult to say. But uh, in that in that time, that what we have is the dry season in Galapagos, especially in the months of uh, July, August, September. That's when we have the dry season. That means everything is dry on the island, so it's not too green like the first three or four months of, of the year. And what is the advantage for that? We don't have rain like that, but most of the animals they just go to the water. What what can we find in the in the winter season, the rainy season? But we when we have a lot of rain, we can find more animals on the island. But in that time, it's not the best time if the people wants to dive. The best period of time just for the people who love to die is from June, June until October, November. That's when the cold, cold uh, currents come from, from the south part, and we have the water, the, the water real cold. So that's the best period of time for the people who are diving. That doesn't mean that we have another people, that, uh, people who love to dive in the other period of time. They also can find some, some animals also in the water. So all the year we have a lot of species in the water. But the best time of the year is, is the dry season, that one we have in the Galapagos. That's here. Here we see in the, in the, in the screen we have the different temperatures that we have from the, um, in general, from the temperature, the water temperature, rainfall, that's what, what, what we have in Galapagos in general, to give you an, a main idea of, of the Galapagos. Also, okay, here, we, if you see, um, that's the dry season. That's the temperature that what we have, and then what we have before is the warm season. So you can you can see the difference of temperature, the water temperature, and everything what we have, the rainfall, considering millimeters. So that's what we have, just to give you an idea of both both uh, changes. Okay. Okay. Um, like like we have the, the last time about animals, right? Okay, the, la, the the last time the last time we had a lot of questions about what animals can can we see in Galapagos and when can we see those animals. So that was a big question because we we try to answer all the questions. Actually, we will have questions. In, if you have some questions right now about the animals or what I'm talking right now, so it's one person answering right now the whole questions that you are making in this time. So if you have questions from, from, from this team, so free feel just to ask you what, what you want. We are going to try to, to, to answer all the questions in this moment, but if we can't in this moment, so we are going to answer later just the whole questions that you are having. Okay, first I'm going to talk about the different, I, I'm trying just to talk about the most famous animals in Galapagos, that's what most of the people are considering is the best part of the, 
of of this presentation because you have a lot of a lot of questions about the people who just want to come to Galapagos to see a special uh, a species of, of animals. So I'm going to talk about the best or the or the the most famous animals in Galapagos, just to give you an idea when you have people who are interested to to visit to Galapagos when you can find them. Okay, I'm going to talk about the giant turtles. Where you can find giant turtles in the natural atmosphere, in the natural ambience. Uh, we have in the giant turtles, we can find in Santa Cruz, Floriana, and Isabella. We can find those animals in the high parts. And also there, are, uh, there, are, there is another population also in San Cristobal as well. We have interpret interpretation center where we can find those the eggs of those animals and how they how they grow, and you you have a, a lot of sizes of the of those animals. So it's, it's also a good part uh, when we visit. We are considering when we have in the, now in our itineraries of the of the cruises, we have those visits included each in the morning or or when you come when you just arrive at Galapagos. Okay. I'm going to talk about the penguins. Um, penguins we can find in Floriana and Bartolomé. It is not guaranteed that you will find them, but most of the cases you you can find on the lava formations that we have in those islands. Especially if we are talking about in Floriana and the Crown Stable, and uh, if you are considering the Bartolomé formation. If you are considering the the, um, the lava formations of Bartolomé, you can find also in the Pinnacle. That's the most famous uh, part of, of the island of Bartolomé. Okay, sea. Uh, I'm going to talk about the sea iguanas. Uh, you can find the sea iguanas in all the islands. Especially, we can find more in Floriana, Española, Bartolomé. Uh, Santa Cruz, uh, San Cristobal. So we have all the in all the places. But like like you see maybe in this in this picture on the on the right side at the at the bottom, you can find a, another kind of uh, of uh, uh, sea iguana that's a little bit uh, green with red. You you can find those animals in the in the Española island. And also we can find also in Genovesa Island as well. Uh, we have also the like you see in this in this picture uh, on the on the left side at the top you can find the the sea uh, the the land iguana, and you can find those animals especially in the islands Plaza and Santa Fe. Okay, le, um, let's talk about the blue boobies. Where we can find blue boobies, we can find blue boobies uh, in Santa Fe. We can find blue boobies also in Santa Cruz in, at the sites. We can find it in Española. We can we can find in Genovesa. We can find in Floriana, in Plaza, Seymour. So there are different places that you can find uh, blue boobies. Um, about the red boobies, like like you could probably have seen some pictures about the red boobies. What we have, uh, where we can find them, is, that's the only place where we can find red boobies, that's only in Genovese side. I would like also to explain, we have a lot of a lot of requests from people who just love the birds. Where are the best places where we can find uh, birds? The places that we recommend to see birds is, the best place is Genovese, that's where you can find a lot of triggered birds, Blue boobies, red boobies. We have um, Galapagos hawks, Galapagos owl. So we have different different kinds of birds. Another another good place is Española. It's also one of the famous places. And the third place that we recommend is Fernandina. Uh, in this picture, like you see, what we have is the albatross. The albatross. That's the picture that we have on the on the right side at the top. That's the, the the birds that we see there. Uh, these are the albatross. Where we can find them? We can find them in the Spaniola Island. Only in the Spaniola Island. When? We can find them only from May until October. We have a lot of re requests from people who just want to see those birds. But if they come in another month that we, uh, 
that is not from that is maybe from November until April, it is not it is not possible to see them. So what we recommend is only from May until October. What do they they do in the other period of time? They just come to the land part of Ecuador. So what we recommend if they are going to, if they are in Galapagos and they want to see the albatross, the only period of time is from May until October. Okay, let's talk about um, flightless cormorants. We have a special, uh, that's endemic species of flightless cormorants that we can find only in Isabella Island. Isabella and Fernandina, that's uh, the places where we can find the flightless cormorants. Uh, I'm going to talk about the owls. Where we can find the owls? We can find the owls, the Galapagos owls, that's what we have in Española and Genovesa Island. And also the hawks, Galapagos hawks, that's more easy to find in those places as well, Española and Genovesa. But also we, we have seen also some species in Santa Fe, uh, in Seymour as well, in plazas. So it's, it's, it's not the main places, but most of the people, they just, they just found them in Española and Genovesa. Okay, I'm going to talk about this. The, we have two kinds, two species of sea lions that we can find in, in the Galapagos Islands. The sea lions, we have one that's the California species, that's what we have. And also we have the, the, the species coming from the South Pole, the South Pole, Pole. And we have those kinds of, of, of sea lions. Where we can find them? We can find uh, them in all of the islands. Especially we have big colonies in San Cristobal and in Santa Fe. These are the places where we have big colonies of sea lions. But that doesn't mean that we can't find them in all the places. We can find sea lions in all the different places all around Galapagos. Uh, I'm going to talk about flamingos. Where we can find flamingos? Flamingos uh, we can find especially in Floriana, in Santiago, Fernandina, Isabela, and in Santa Cruz. Recently we can find, we can find in Garrapatero. Garrapatero is a special, a small place in uh, uh, Santa Cruz, and this is a little bit strange. But in the last months, we can find in Floriana, so it's difficult to guarantee those those birds. But we see those species, especially in those places. I repeat: Santa Cruz, Floriana, Santiago, Fernandina, and Isabella. I'm going to talk about dolphins. Where we can find dolphins? We can find dolphins around the island Floriana, Bartolomé. Santiago, Santa Cruz, Seymour, and Plazas. That's where we can find most of them. That, that doesn't mean that we don't see them in Isabella or in other places. We also have seen some, some dolphins in all, in all the other islands, especially in those areas that I, I, I mentioned before. Okay, uh, what about the frigate birds? Frigate birds we can find in all the places also in the island, especially in Española and Genovesa. Uh, and uh, actually, they, they they just go with all the the, the ships uh, who are uh, visiting the different islands. You can find also frigate birds uh, uh, with the red red patch that that we have uh, that is familiar just to see those animals. Uh, what about um, the lava formations? The people who just love to see the lava formations. Uh, the best places where we can see the lava formations. Which, we just we just uh, we, we just uh, we have two kinds of, of lava formations, and where we can find them we have in Bartolome, Santiago, Isabela, and Fernandina. These are places, especially places where where I mean, okay, all the islands as you know, uh, as I mentioned before, is all the islands were made by volcanic eruptions. So what we have everything is volcanic area, but the places where they they have they are known by for by the lava formations is Bartolomé, Santiago, Isabel, and Fernandina. And in Isabel and Fernandina, we still have active volcanoes. So that's, that's wonderful just to see what we have uh, in those islands. OK, uh, that's what, what we have uh, about the penguins. I already told you before. So you can find here the different animals that we have in, the, in Galapagos in general. So if you have questions about where we can find them, or if you have any specific questions about the animals and what, where we can find them, what and how do they look, or about the colors, about some, something familiar, or something specific that you are needing, please, please feel free to, to write us, and we will just answer your whole questions.
Okay, I'm going to give you, uh, Maria, just to give you a quick presentation about our cruises, about our itineraries and all the, the, the information that we are having here. Thank you, Javier. Uh, well, as you can see, Galapagos is a great option to travel with family. It's not only a fun experience, but it's also a learning experience. Uh, you know, because the guides talk about the history, biology, ecology, even geology of how the islands were fo formed from the very beginning. And actually, you can see the process and these rough islands, how they're formed with lava. Well, the environment in the Galapagos is unique, and all the activities are according to the interests of the people that are coming to, to, the, to our yacht. I want to give you here, well, here, somebody was asking about the tortoises. Here you can see them in the reserve, as well as the sea turtles. You can see them in all the islands. Here is a list of activities that you can do uh, between hiking, snorkeling, oh, I'm sorry. Hiking, snorkeling, kayaking, um, talking about nature conservancy. Actually, our guides give seminars in the evenings at the yachts about nature, uh, about the environment of the Galapagos and the history of the Galapagos. There are very interesting lectures. People are taking pictures here as well and enjoying the wildlife. Here is our fleet of yachts. Again, one of the most important things to de determine the trip between Machu Picchu and, and Galapagos is choosing the vessel because the, the dates of the departures of the vessels of the Galapagos are the only ones that are fixed departures. So what you have to do is first to choose your vessel and then the, the time of range that you're going to spend in the Galapagos. And after that, you can customize the part of Peru and Ecuador. Just to give you an idea of these points, uh, normally people ask about a trip of Machu Picchu and Galapagos for 10 days, but uh, we say it's quite impossible and we don't recommend it because at least you will need 15 days because we have to consider in consider the, the traveling between the two countries. Then another main aspect is uh, choosing a budget. Uh, in air, in not including air first, uh, it might range per person between five thousand to eight thousand dollars, US American dollars. And if you consider the local air first, you will have to add another fifteen hundred dollars per person. That will be for the entire trip Lima Cusco Lima, Quito, Galapagos, Quito. When you find the right vessel, I will suggest that you take, uh, if you are taking a trip of 15 days to Galapagos and Machu Picchu, the vessels offer a five and six days cruises. So I will suggest that you take that. If you would like to stay in an eight day longer cruise, then you have to add those extra days to your whole um, stay in South America. So it will be a trip about 17, 18 days. We consider our fleet to be the best vessels in the respective classes. The, the cruises operate fixed schedules, and, but they visit most of the islands in Galapagos. That is, that is the main advantage of being in a cruise. The last thing you have to determine is how active you're going to be in Machu Picchu. Any way you get, how you get there really is up to you because when you are in Machu Picchu, you will spend the same amount of time to enjoy the ruins, this uh, wonderful place. So if you are more adventurous, we will recommend you the Inca Trail. Otherwise, you can do a mix of walking car and train. Also, we will be happy to, to give you a proposal 
uh, a free proposal if you, if you are in need of that. We, I would like to continue with the vessels. Here we have the seaman journey. It's a wonderful catamaran because it is a catamaran. You have more space. As you can see in the deck plants, we have eight cabins, all with air conditioning and private bathroom, full showers, hot water, ocean windows view. The rooms are above water level, meaning you can open the windows and enjoy the free, uh, the fresh, fresh breeze of the ocean. Let me show you the, the here you have the, the rooms. And I'm sorry. Here I can show you the rooms and the bathroom, the dining area, and the social area. As I told you, I just quote here for this uh, presentation smaller uh, itineraries because we are trying to fix an itinerary in total of the visit of Ecuador and Peru for 15 days. So you, we have a four-day, five-night program with itinerary, a five-day, four-night program, and even the eight-day if you want to lo make a longer stay. Also, if you want to add other trips in Ecuador, uh, visit the Andes, uh, rainforests, etc., you have to consider that in, in when you choose the length of your stay in South America. This is another of Yaks, Galapagos Odyssey. It's very comfortable. Um, this this yacht is um, is a first class yacht. <coughs> Let me see. Well, this yacht is is top quality of its kind. The crew is excellent, and we have um, as you can see, we have four cabins. There are twins, and that is in the upper deck. And in the main deck, we have two twin cabins and two matrimonial cabins, giving a total of 15 packs capacity. Here we have the photo gallery, the matrimonial, the twin room. We have a dining area, a social area, the sun deck that is all wooden deck, and a, a jacuzzi that is a perfect spot for gathering. Normally after doing the snorkeling or kayaking, our guests gather at the jacuzzi in order to have a drink. Again, uh, we choose shorter itineraries in order to make the trip of 15 days. And here we have a little bit longer, six days, five nights itinerary. This is our exclusive yacht, Galapagos Grand Odyssey. It's as spacious as the catamaran, but has the decoration is magnificent. Um, the rooms are very elegant. Um, I would say that actually there are not cabins that are considered suites. We have here we have uh, in the upper deck, as you can see, you have a um, uh, here you have uh, like a presidential suite <laughs> for a yacht, and then you have other three twin rooms, and in the sand deck. We have two matrimonials and two twin cabins. The social areas are very space, have wonderful space, elegant, and the crew make your experience uh, unbelievable. Itineraries similar to the other yachts, so depends on the budget you want to spend. This yacht, Galapagos Voyagers, is mainly uh, used for alumni groups, students that are traveling to Galapagos with a shorter budget. It's a cozy uh, yacht. The crew is wonderful. So it's a, a smaller yacht, but it's still in comparison to the to what there's the offers in Galapagos, I will um, consider it, it to be a tourist class yacht. Here you have the rooms, the dining area, and the sand deck. As I mentioned before, Galapagos is not only um, a wonderful place to learn a scientific 
uh, spot is also a place to have fun. So meantime, in the excursions in the morning and afternoon, you go with your guide to learn about the Iceland and discover and be like a, a voyager, you know, just be like the first person to step in one of those islands. There you have also time to do kayaking, snorkeling, in zodiac, and mm -hmm. and even swim in near to the to the beach in the Galapagos, White Sand Beach. Here are some pictures of the activities. I would like that you read for yourself what says in this chart because really we gather uh, here what we believe and the reason why Galapagos is such a unique place. I always say Galapagos is quite simply unlike any other place in the world. You must explore it yourself. No information that I'm giving you now or Javier can really prepare you to what you have seen because the islands are more rough more untamed and more beautiful. The animal world is daily surprise. A zoo with no fences, just magical, where visitors and nature are in harmony. Here you are back to Quito from Galapagos. You will receive assistance from Latin trails, like I offered before. We can send you a free sample itinerary to any of you that would like for this 15 days activity. And I would like to introduce Jorge, that is the, uh, okay, Jorge is telling me that he's gonna support me in this webinar because he's uh, our Peruvian expert, but he, um, he will support me in the questions. So I would like to say welcome to Peru, to all of you. The highlight of Peru, as, as you might have heard, even though Peru is a wonderful country that offers so many places, but the most visited place in, in Peru is Cusco. And the reason is because everybody wants to go to Machu Picchu. That is one of the, I'm sorry, I'm hearing a lot of noise, um, is one of the wonders of the world. Hi, my name is Jorge. I'm from Peru and Welcome, Esther Jorge. from Peru. Yeah, uh, I, my English is not so good, uh, and if I need uh, help to translate, I will say Beba. Uh, she will me help. If you hear, Peru is a, a nice country. It's a very big country. Can can I see the the slide before, please? Okay. And the most visitors from Peru goes to the south, yeah, because you here in the south of Peru is Cusco and Machu Picchu, but you can visit the north of Peru. Uh, there, there are there are a, a lot of uh, tourist places like Cuelap, and Cuelap is another ring, but it's not famous be, uh, like Machu Picchu. The next, the next place. The next. Slide. Uh, the most visitors they come by, by plane to Peru. Uh, that means the Euro, uh, European or, the, or the, the people from Asia or from North, North America they come by plane, and they must to to visit or they must to land it first in Lima. Some visitors decide to stay a night or two nights in Lima. There are uh, a lot of, uh, of places you can visit in Lima, interesting. And you can, you can connect direct from Lima to Cusco. I don't, uh, I don't recommend to play direct, uh, to, to fly direct from Lima to Cusco, because Cusco uh, is 3,400 meters high. That, that can be the first day not so uh, not um, comfortable for our our uh, tourists or our visitors the next the next slide 
La siguiente, por favor. Yeah. Here you can see a photo from, from uh, Machu Picchu. Yeah. And this, fo this photo says us everything because it's, it's a, a mix yeah, between the uh, el paisaje, ¿cómo se dice paisaje inglés? Eh, Deba. <laughs> ya, yeah. eh, eh, Jorge, solo una cosa. Estás en el en la en el slide del Inca Trail. Ah, okay. Yeah. In this slide, you can see the map of how can you get, uh, how can you arrive to to Machu Picchu. In the inferior, in, in the in the inferior place from the from this map, you will see a line. Yeah, in gray color, it is the train. That means you can r arrive Machu Picchu by train. That's the comfortable. Yeah, and uh, and this is the um, fastest to go to Machu Picchu. But you can go to Machu Picchu by foot. That you can walk to Machu Picchu, and it's a very fr a famous trip. And you can do in four days or in two days, yeah? Can you help me, Beba, uh, in kilometer, kilometer 82, in the, in the, the others, uh, in, la, in la slide anterior, por favor, in la anterior, okay. en el mapa. Yeah, kilometer 80, 88. Yeah, hello? No, we're not hearing Jorge right now, um, Maria. Maybe he will come back with us in a second. Um, did we go ahead? Well, and I, I will. I will continue. Meantime, Jorge comes back with us. Uh, well, he was explaining that two ways we can go to the Machu Picchu area. One is by train. One is walking. To go walking, you have to uh, determine uh, how well fit you are, because as Jorge told us. Uh, we are going to a very high altitude, so there's going to be lack of oxygen. Uh, it's going to be a physical challenge. So if you decide to go Machu Picchu by the Inca Trail, uh, some training should be done in advance, uh, and you will have to be in the right health condition. Uh, again, the, the main question, do you need to be fit to, be, to do the Inca Trail? Yes, even though a lot of people do the Inca Trail, people might think it is, it, it is easy. But you not only need the physical training, but also need the right equipment, right shoes, uh, clothes for, for the extreme weather that you will find in Machu Picchu, depending on the time uh, and season that you are going. Here are some, uh, a little, some drawings of how is the, the four-day program and the, uh, the two-day program and the four-day program of the Inca Trail. As you can see, the, the, the four-day program goes longer distances to get to Machu Picchu. And the two-day program, since they use first the train here in the gray, and then just walk for the last part of, of Machu Picchu. Here, you can see where you stop. In the two days, the Inca Trail itinerary, Cusco, uh, 104 kilometers, you go to Huayna, and then to Machu Picchu. Uh, the main, the main uh, beauty of doing the Inca Trail is passing through the Sun Gate. They say, I haven't been there, uh, Jorge was explaining this to me, just getting in the morning, very early in the morning, before the sun come out, and passing that gate is one of the wonderful things that, you know, our world and our natural um, conditions offer to people, you know, is something that cannot be described in words. Uh, like I told you before, the Inca Trail today is partially by car, walking, and train. But still, you need to be well fit. 
here are the two main places you go. First you, you go to Winai Waina and then you get to the ruins. The four day trail is a lot more complicated. You have to do the camping. Uh, there's no toilets uh, facility so actually they, they have a special toilet that they are uh, biodegradable for, for this process. You have a cook that travel all the way up to Machu Picchu with you and help you uh, but you have to consider carrying your own things um, uh, like water and, and, and of course your camera <laughs> if you have enough if you <laughs> if you're, uh, have enough um, oxygen to and energy to take pictures <laughs> in this in this walk here is a picture more or less of the kind of transportation we use in, in Machu Picchu and what Latin Trails offers. And here is the, the famous train that, that gets you there. But again, no matter how you get to Machu Picchu, you will uh, still enjoy the same time to see the ruins. And that's the, the wonderful part of, of the journey. So this is customized to you. If you are very active and you want to do the challenge, good for you. I'm the kind of person that will take the train and enjoy myself in Machu Picchu. <laughs> the weather. Uh, from Peru, uh, from Peru varies, but I'm going to talk specifically in the part of Machu Picchu. From April to November is dry and what is called a shiny season because you see the, the sun all, uh, all the time during this season. And from November to March is the rainy season in Machu Picchu. Here, more or less, are the temperatures, so you can have an idea how how it vary. It doesn't vary much, as you can see. It, but sometimes what happens in the South America, especially countries, is that in the morning, you know, the temperature from the morning to the night it changes drastically. In the morning, can be warm, and at night can lower the temperatures to. Here is the people that you will find during your journey, some other visitors and some people that are locals. And the last thing I would like to say about this is that if really you can dream this experience, we can plan it for you. So we invite you to, to ask uh, a plan to do the Machu Picchu and Galapagos portion that we think is a combination that cannot be much with any other. And the advantage is because we have this wonderful neighbor country that is Peru. And we have partners there, and we have our Latin Trails office there. So that make it possible. For booking procedure, again, you just have to consult the sh if a ship is available, choose your vessel, uh, choose the dates, and let us know all this will be done with our executive in sales. He will pass on all the information available so you have to make your own choice. Uh, plan your packing and of course the main information, uh, your passport, uh, we need to know your dietary restrictions, if you have allergies, any medical conditions you consider we should uh, know in advance and any other special arrangement is important that we know to customize your trip. Here is our contact information, so you can uh, let us know as your, at your earliest convenience uh, when you would like to visit Ecuador and Peru. Thank you for your time, and here I would like to leave you with Javier Echeverria, that is our sales manager, that want to uh, wish you luck and add a few things. Thank you. Bye. Hello, it's me again. Sorry. Um, I have checked uh, the questions that we have, so I just would like just to to pass again the the slides of the animals because most of the people the, they were asking just to to have. Uh, 
short view of the of the slides of the animals and of the temperature. So I'm going to pass again the presentation of the Galapagos part, just to give you an idea about um, just to to see you that you can you can take a look of the of the weather conditions of the climate of the temperature that you were asking just to to have a a view of that. So let me just go uh, quick to go to the other part of, of the presentation. Okay, here we are. So I'm going just to to leave you first with um, just to give you an idea of the uh, temperature. That's the slide of the warm season. So you can take a look, and you just you can you can see uh, the temperature and information about the water rainfall in the warm season. Like I repeat you before, warm season is it is it is more like uh, from April until October, November. It depends. It depends on the year, but it's more on that period of time. And again, like I told you before, let me give you the dry season. The dry season is more from December until March, sometimes April as well. So that's the air temperature, water temperature, rainfall in general. And like I promised you in the answers that you were asking me, uh, here is the slides from the animals, just to give you uh, uh, information about that, just to Okay, the information I already give you, like, like I told you, uh, we had some questions asking us just to send you information about that. If you are interested in a special animal or if you want to have the presentation, we can send it, we can send it to you uh, by, by your mail. Here are the different kinds of animals and, and all the birds that we can find in Galapagos as well. And if you see also, we have also the, the names of the islands also at the bottom of the presentation, so you can see more animals like that in those places as well. Maybe. So, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Javier. Okay. So that's that's the presentation. I just wanted just to to say you to say you thank you very much for for this time. Thank you very much for your trust in this presentation. And also, if you are needing some special requests, so uh, please feel free to contact us. And I would like just to give you my email because I I have seen also some questions that you were trying to give you some proposals on some questions, special some questions, and my email is travel at latintrails.com. So it was a pleasure to, to have you here in this time, so I hope that I can answer um, most of the questions you have had, and if you, have, if you still have more questions, I will, I will send it to you in the, in the afternoon as well. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure also for us. In the name of Latin Trails, we say thank you to all of you. Thank you. Um, and do we have time uh, just to for me to read a couple of questions to you? Sure, as well? great. Okay, great. great. And I'm going to. I think Jorge's back with us. So, Jorge, are you with us? Jorge? Yeah, I'm here. I'm back. Okay, good. I'm back. Thank you. Okay. So I w I wanted to ask a couple of questions about Peru. There's a question about the altitude at the of the Sacred Valley. Uh, the Secret Valley is 2,800 meters altitude. That means uh, the last times, most of the agencies recommend the, um, the travelers to stay the first night in the Secret Valley and not in Cusco. Uh, that uh, that is if the if the visitor have more time, uh, it's recommended to to stay in the Secret Valley. All right, thank you. And for the two-day trek to Machu Picchu, how does the transportation work? Do you mean for the Inca Trail two days? I think so. I think that is the question, yes. How do okay. people get from one place to the next? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the two, two days Inca Trail, 
uh, you will uh, pick up from the hotel in a private private minibus or bus and you will get to to the train station and with, with the train station with the train you will you will travel to the kilometer 104 yeah, and the train stop there and all the passengers who who made the um, Inca trail two, two days they they go out the train and and they they start to walk to the ruins to the ruins uh, all the work in this day it, it depends your condition but normally you do in six hours yeah and it's not six hours like a marathon or six hour uh, uh, you you can stop with the guy and do and do the, the pictures. It's a very comfortable walking. And then okay. you arrive in the Machu Picchu ruins. You will stay there no more than ten minutes because you must go out to run the ruins. And then you go by bus to Aguascalientes. In Aguascalientes, you ca you get um. A hostel or a hotel. It depends how do you how you comfortable you want to to sleep. And the next day, early in the morning, you take the bus to Machu Picchu and you have a visit, a private visit uh, from one hour to two hour. It depends the interest of, of the of the passengers. And then you go back to our Calientes by bus and then with the train. You go about to Cusco and uh, to Poroy. To Poroy is the the near train station, the near train station from Cusco, and you will pick up and go to a hotel with the bus. All right, very good, thank you. And uh, let's see, what about uh, there's questions about weather Machu Picchu in May. What would the weather be like? In May, it's very recommend because. The rainy season uh, is go out. It's no rain, yeah, and it's no too cold. Yeah, I, I recommend to visit Machu Picchu April, May, and September and October, because June, July, and August it could be cold, but no rain too. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, let's see, Javier. Some questions about you for you. Do you have a group program? Javier, do I still have you? Oh, I must. I must. Have, Maria, do I have you? <laughs> okay. Maria. I'm not getting either of them right now. So, okay, well, let's uh, let's just uh, go ahead and continue asking questions about Peru for a minute. Um, is there a better time to uh, to climb, uh, 7 a.m. or 10 a.m.? Which is a better time to to uh, climb um, when you're up at Machu Picchu? What is the the better time to be in the ring? I think so. Yes. Yeah, in in the early in the morning. With with the with the first with the first bus, it means uh, the first bus uh, is at five at five o'clock in the morning, but the doors of Machu Picchu were open at six six o'clock. It uh, uh, it takes uh, thirty minutes to go from Aguascalientes to Machu Picchu, and you must to to wait thirty minutes. Uh, it is the, the better time because at this time it's it's not too uh, there are not too many vis uh, visitors or the tourists and you can get uh, very nice pictures. Okay, uh, one more question for you, and then we'll try Javier again. Um, the Inca Trail, the two-day Inca Trail trek that you talked about, do people have to camp? Where do they stay at night? The, the people don't camp. In the how I, I explained the first day you walk six hours before you arrive Machu Picchu, and then you have ten minutes in the rain, and then you must go with the bus 
two hours calientes and you sleep in hours calientes in a in a hotel or a hostel. That means you will have a night in hours calientes and you don't camp. You don't have a camp. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Javier, are you back with us? Yeah, sure. I'm here. Okay. Great. So I think we've asked uh, most of the questions, and you've, I can see that you and Maria have been answering questions in the chat box as well. So I will turn it back over to you now for anything else you would like to say before we um, close today. OK. Um, I think we already have, have answered all the questions, but I don't know if you have something special that you would like just to, to remind again or maybe just to to see what we can reverse. <laughs> right. OK. Well, we will definitely be um, uh, sending out the replay to everyone. So I want to make sure everyone knows that that replay will be up and available. And we will be doing another webinar in about a month and have a new topic. So we hope that all of you will um, continue to join us to learn more and uh, to um, strengthen your relationship with Latin Trails, and you have a great partner down there in the Galapagos with Latin Trails. So I hope that you will take advantage of that and contact Javier and Maria when you're thinking about planning a trip for your clients to uh, Peru and Galapagos. So thanks to both of you, Javier and Maria, and, and also to you, Jorge. Okay, it was a pleasure also for us, so please feel free to contact us again. <laughs>